day two of the Butterick 6386 Lisette Windbreaker Sew Along. In yesterday's video, I talked you through finding your size, uh, making pattern alterations, cutting the pattern pieces, and cutting your fabric. So if you missed that, be sure to click this link up here and that will take you to yesterday's video. I will also have links to all of the videos in the series as they are posted in the description box if you want to check that out. But today we are going to be sewing steps one through ten of our jacket. Now, I am not going to stand here and tell you that this is the world's simplest pattern because quite frankly, it's not. There's a lot of curves. Um, if you've ever sewn princess seams before, it's very similar to that. So you know how that can be a little bit tricky, but don't worry because I'm going to be holding your hand through every single step and at the end of today's video you will have completed your the front of your jacket. You'll have a left side and a right side. Um, so it's a long video so without further ado let's get over to the cutting table and we can start sewing. Okay who's ready to sew? Um, a couple things. I'm going to put a little graphic up here. My machine and needle settings are as follows. I am using for my fabric, that slub uh, ripstop that I linked in the last video, I'm using a sharp or micro text needle size 80. And I have that in my sewing machine and in my serger. And then my serger settings are from left to right. So from left needle to lower looper is six, 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 five and a quarter. I know that sounds like bad luck, but that's, <laughs> that's what it is. And I tested out uh, some scrap fabric and that all worked out well. So that's what I'm going to stick with. I've also, can you see over here, I've got all my pattern pieces um, laid out where the uh, pattern pieces on top and then I fold them this way so that the number is on the uh, facing up and then I chronologically lay them out so two three four five six and eight you don't have to be that <laughs> organized if you don't want to it just really helps me and when I'm ready to go on to the next pattern piece I can easily just grab it and I know what I'm looking for okay with all that said we have got our very first step here um, and this is for all the views, or at least for the views of the jacket. Stay stitch, side, front, edge, front, between square and double notches. We are going to be stay stitching. Stay, all the stay stitch is, is a regular size stitch on the seam line or just barely inside the seam line. Um, stitch through one layer or each layer of the fabric. And that prevents... Um, fabrics from stretching out over time and also while you sew and handle the fabric and it usually happens around curves so that makes sense that we are going to be doing it here but they want us to stay stitch from this square all the way up to the double notches that is our first sewing task One more tip that I forgot to mention before I jumped right into the stay stitching is, how did I have these laid out? To, um, when you have your uh, fabric just after you've cut it out, you can even do that um, before you get them all arranged. But what I like to do, especially with fabrics that are the same front to back or seemingly the same, is I will mark the right sides with pins. So I know which side is the right side. Now it's not gonna mess me up in terms of the construction of the garment, but what will happen is if you use like the right, this side for the front and then you use the other side for the sleeve, they could have slightly differing colors. And so it could look like two different fabrics. I like to just, you know, take every precaution and just make sure that no matter which side I've decided is my right side, that all of the pieces are that. So 
another neat little tip for you. Okay, so here's our stay stitching. I've also put my stay stitching in um, a contrast. I am going to keep this red thread here in the event that I need to like demonstrate for you guys where the stitching is because as you can see the burgundy one blends in so well. So this one you can really see my stitching really well. So from the double notch all the way down to the square. Okay, turn in the page. We have step two. And this is to attach our pocket. We went over this a little bit in the um, cutting video just because things got a little bit confusing. But we are gonna find piece number two, which I can easily grab because you know I have it all laid out and all organized. And we're going to pin lower side front edge, matching notches, squares, and circles, stitch from side edge to square, trim seam allowances. And if you look at the little photo here or illustration here, you can see it's really they're stitching between the small dot and the large dot. Why they didn't just say that, I have no idea. So again, go ahead and mark your right sides with pens. You could do this with a marking tool, but you never know if those things are gonna come out all the way. So, so there's my right sides of this. Now I know where my right sides are of my front pieces, like so. And now I know right sides together puts this guy here and this guy here, like so, okay? So I'm only gonna work with one just to illustrate for you guys how this works, but we're matching up the raw edges along the side and along this curve here. And we are just gonna pin all of this in place. In my experience, the very little experience I've had with this ripstop so far is that you need very sharp pins to pierce through this fabric. That's why I'm using a Microtex needle versus a universal needle, simply because it's so much sharper. But make sure that you are lining up all of your notches. So I've got one here. I'm gonna make sure those are lined up. And just continue to go around until this whole edge is pinned together. And again, we are going to be going from, it's upside down, but we're gonna be going from this small dot here all the way around to the square. And the square should be in the seam allowance of the edge of um, the pocket. Okay, so stitch that down and then they want you to trim it back. So you're gonna trim it back um, two, three, where there's a three eighths of an inch seam allowance left. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I went too far on accident. That's okay. Um, I didn't backstitch, so I can just pull some of these up with this seam ripper. I went too far. It happens. Also, just trying to ease in the um, the excess pocket fabric because I think that that's what they want us to do, but I'm getting a little bit of puckering. So I'm going to rip that out and sew it again between the little notch that we have here and somewhere over here just to get a better, um, flatter situation. All right, so the next step is to trim back the seam allowances. I do feel like uh, serrated scissors are gonna be really good for a project like this. If you don't have them, that's okay. Just use your regular you know, sewing shears, but trim this back. Just till you get to um, that square again and then I'm going to just cut through the pocket from the square and beyond and then this guy can just go away like so. So on one side it looks like this and on the other side there's like a little notch now. Okay. Next we're going to understitch the pocket which is simply stitching the seam allowances which are these guys here to the pocket. So you're gonna put it in your machine where the seam allowances are facing the pocket and you're gonna put it in your machine like this and set your needle so that it's barely, barely just over this little seam line here. So it's gonna be very close, like eighth of an inch, 16th of an inch um, toward the pocket side of the seam.
Okay, so at this point, you are going to want to um, press this pocket toward the inside. It should follow along your side seam like so, and then come up toward like this. And your seam is gonna roll toward the inside because we did all of that lovely understitching. So go ahead, press this. You're gonna use a light uh, heat. This will melt, so use a very light heat. So just a light, light heat, and don't spend too much time in one place. Just keep moving it around. And we are gonna take um, piece number four, which is the yoke sleeve and front. And so this piece kind of wraps around the front and also becomes the sleeve all in one. It's magic. So you are going to reinforce this seam here. Basically, this is going to get a lot of tension um, because we are the way that we're going to sew it and when we wear it. So we want to reinforce this. It's like another version of stay stitching really, but you're going to be coming like from an inch or so away on this side and an inch or so away on this side. And you're just stitching along the seam allowance, pivoting at this dot and coming down here, not all the way, but just like I said, a couple inches on either side of this mark. Okay, so now that we've got our stitches in, um, you can see them here, we are gonna clip into our fabric up until that little um, pivot that we made. So you're gonna clip two, but not through that little line there. Okay, so now I've got this situation happening and that's gonna help us attach the fabric to um, the upper front, which is gonna be our next step. So we're gonna grab Piece number three. All right, so now we are gonna take the, it says pin upper front, which is piece three, two yoke and sleeve front, right sides together, matching notches and circles, okay? So right sides together, okay, this is gonna, <laughs> boy, you guys know how to pick them. Okay, so right sides together, which you can see, I've got my right side pin here and my right side pin here, so that's how I know which sides are the right sides. And basically we are gonna be placing this little curved seam. Let me show you piece three. This seam here and this seam here are what eventually become this seam here and this seam here. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, don't be scared, you can do it. It's just fabric and we are humans. <laughs> we are smarter and better than fabric. So we're gonna have a little bit of an over, a little bit of a tag hanging off, that's fine. Just make sure you've got your notch totally matched up and then follow it around, place this dot right where this other dot is. And the easiest way to do that is to put a pin right through it, put a pin right through it. Okay, so I've got a pin going through both dots. Get your pin so that it's going straight through, like not like this and not like that, but that it's going straight through the fabrics, keeping the raw edges together and then put that pin in. Okay, so we're just gonna worry about this right now. We're not gonna worry about pivoting and doing this yet. So we've got all this extra fabric in here that we need to quote unquote ease in. And that's just a matter of stretching the fabric along this curve. It should stretch pretty easily because this is the bias of the fabric. So even though the nylon itself isn't stretchy, anything on a bias because it's woven is gonna be stretchy. All right, you see that we've got that here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sew this down starting at the X, marks the spot, all the way to this raw edge just so it's done and it's out of the way. And then when I go to attach this edge here to this edge. I won't have to worry about this anymore. So go ahead and stitch this one seam here. Yes, I sew over my pins. Don't at me. It's fine. I promise. <laughs> It was cringing, it was cringing. Okay, you can see we got that in and all those little bumps are now within the seam allowance. Super cool, right? Okay, so now we're gonna take this and we're just gonna keep it here at the machine so that 
because we're just gonna keep sewing. But you wanna rotate this around, and because we put that, um, we snipped into our fabric, that is gonna spread apart. So just keep your seam allowances um, even on the raw edge and pin along this edge. Up here on piece three, there is a flattened edge. That flattened edge becomes flat with the, I guess this is the shoulder or the, you know, whatever part of piece four this is. Those two things lay flat against each other. Okay, and then, so I'll pin up to the corner, and then you can see we've got a little bit more easing to do because three, again, is bigger than four, but that's okay because you've already done it once, so you can do it again. It's just a matter of taking your time and kind of like, you know, feeling through the fabric. You can obviously use a lot more pins as well, but I've marked quarter ways, and I know when I stretch it out, we're gonna be a-okay. The other thing you wanna make sure of is that you keep this nice and flat as you're sewing through um, that, sewing up to that um, X marks the spot. So I'm just using my fingers to pull, pull everything away from the seam I'm sewing now so that whenever I come down here, it's nice and flat all the way through. Okay, so I'm gonna back stitch two times and then back to the X again and then just rotate it around. Again, making sure everything's flat just to like get that corner really good. Like I said, it's gonna get a lot of tension on it. Um, and because it's at an angle, it's just a little bit funky. So I just wanna make sure that we can get that. And you can feel with your finger, all the machine is not gonna go unless you push the pedal. So you can feel with your finger all the way up here and then continue stitching for a couple of inches and then back again. This is tricky, but I feel like you guys can do it. I believe in you, I really do. I hope you know that by now. All right, if you survived that, we all need to give each other a round of applause. Two thumbs up, congratulations. Look how good that looks. And it's gonna look even better when we press it and trim back the seam allowances and all that good stuff. Okay. So we are now at stitch pivoting at small circle, press seam allowances toward yoke and sleeve front. Before we do that though, I'm gonna run this through my serger and I'm gonna do it in two parts. I'm gonna go zip this way and then I'm gonna go zip this way. Um, not gonna try and do any funky business with this at the serger. I just need to finish these seam allowances because the nylon will start to unravel over time. Um, and then once I do that, then we can press the seam allowances toward the yoke and sleeve front, which is piece number four, this longer one here. That's the yoke and this is the sleeve front. So we're top stitching the yoke and sleeve front from the front edge to the small circle, squaring stitching at small circle. And all squaring means is you're gonna pivot and sew into the, um, into the seam line. That's all that means. So um, let me demonstrate it this way. We have our, and this is exactly how the illustration is, right? This is this here. This is our little notch and that's our little notch. Here's our seam. So this is all pressed this way and this way. And we are gonna top stitch coming down here and top stitching um, unlike under stitching, top stitching is a little bit more toward the inside of the garment. So instead of that 16th of an inch, we're gonna do more of an eighth to a quarter of an inch. So you're gonna sew on top of the fabric all the way down here, like so. And then as you get to where that X was, you're just gonna pivot and sew into the seam there. Don't go past it, just into the seam there and you can take a couple back stitches and then you're gonna be done um, top stitching. So let me show you that at the machine. So I'm lining up the edge of my presser foot with the seam line, and then I'm gonna ping this over to, I don't know, a six? Let's just call it six. Um, and I can take one back stitch, and then just keeping my presser foot in line with the 
edge of the seam line there until you're perpendicular to that little notched edge. Lift your presser foot, rotate her around, and then take a couple stitches into the seam line. One more. Okay. And there we go. So I'm gonna Okay, here we are. I think she's quite beautiful. Um, okay, so the next step, we are moving on to step number seven. Pin upper front slash yoke and sleeve front to front. Boy, that is a confusing sentence, right? Piece number one that we sewed with the pocket gets sewn to what we just made. I laid it out exactly like the illustration where we have piece number one's right side. <clears throat> this is opposite of the illustration because I'm working on the other side, but we have the right side with the big squared off edge, right? And we have our pocket tucked under like this, right? What can you see? Let's turn it this way. There we go. Okay. Um, then we take the right side of everything that we just sewed. Then we're going to place them right sides together. So you have your top stitching and your seams all facing up. And this little curvy edge, this little, I don't know, little corner here gets matched up to the top edge of your front piece like so and I'm gonna only pin it in three places right now to help you see where we're going with this and then we'll continue talking about it after that so we have our double notch matched up to our double notch we're getting a pin there and then we are going to be matching our square which you can barely see but she's there right here with the square from our where we attach the pocket so that square gets lined up with this square and you're pulling the pocket seam allowance out of the way and only working with this little guy here so the square on this guy is here my square is here and they get lined up like so <laughs> i told you guys <laughs> oh man granted i did give you this as an option so it's partially my fault but we're going to figure this out and it's going to be awesome okay so now you can see that we've got a lot of easing in to do right like this is a lot bigger than this is so they tell us um clipping front where necessary and that's another really great reason why we added that stay stitching early on is because it gives us a guide to know where our seam allowance is um, so we can, along, between these two pins, between the um, double notch and the square, you just want to come in and just put little slits to, but not through that seam allowance um, stay stitching that you already made. Take great care in this. You don't want to go past your stitching, but you don't want to go too far in either because then um, the next step will just be all the more difficult. Okay, so now once we do that, look what happens. Now all of a sudden, everything's starting to want to come together and be one. We just need them to be one with each other, right? Okay, so I'm actually going to pin from with the front piece facing up with all these little taggy things because I don't want those to get stuck in the feed dogs of my sewing machine. So find your midway point, pin, and then find the midway point of that, pin. And one, this is very similar to um, princess seams. And what I like to tell people is to not worry about the seam allowances. Those are not meant to come together. It's meant to have the exact same seam line at your seam line nowhere else so if it's still looking lumpy and bumpy in the seam allowance that's okay at the seam line where that stay stitching is everything will be smooth and your feed dogs are going to help feed that through too another good reason to have this bumpy side on your feed dogs because it'll help you know with that process of flattening it out so i am going to just transfer this to the other side like so yeah and just keep pinning until you feel like, okay, I can do this at my machine.
Okay, and once you've done that, now we need to do a similar situation to this edge. But as you can see here, the front piece is bigger than the other. And so we're easing in the opposite way. Very complicated pattern, I gotta say. Which is a good thing because in the end, it's gonna look really good. But again, we are easing it in making sure everything's lined up at the seam line and not concerning ourselves with the seam allowances too, too much. All right, then we're gonna head to our machine and we are going to stitch from this upper edge here all the way down until we get to our square, making sure that that pocket seam allowance is staying out of the way. All right, but we got to stitch all the way to the square as well. So I need to transfer my square to the other side. It's basically where that other stitching stopped, but either way, that's where we want to go, okay? All right, wasn't that fun? Um, okay, so here's what we have. I think she's pretty cute. Okay, and then our pocket's gonna get tucked under like so, and somehow magically the front and the pocket are gonna become like something like this. Oh my gosh, look you guys. Well, you can see your own, but <laughs> that's what it's gonna be, how cool. So freaking cool. I want to do this to a non, like I want to make like a blazer or something out of this. That's so, so fun. All right, so um, 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 stitch from upper edge to square, keeping pocket free, then stitch pocket edges together below square, keeping front free. So that is gonna be a matter of this and this. Let me lay it in a way that you guys can understand what we've got going on. So we just sewed this right up to, down to our square. Now we are going to be sewing the pocket bag to the front piece, starting at the square. So they have you doing it in separate um, places. Again, that's okay. Match your um, your markings. All these little notches that I've got put in here. Well, I guess I just have the one. <laughs> Um, and this one thankfully has no easing, no funny business. You're literally just stitching your um, 5 8 inch seam allowance and that's it. No funny business at all. All that you have to really worry about is when you get up here um, to the square again, you want to make sure that you're keeping everything, you know, out of the way. Okay, when you get close to your square, come up in here and make sure that everything is nice and flat and you don't have any of the front um, that you're gonna catch underneath. So just go underneath all the fabrics and just flatten that out. Again, you can stick your finger up here as long as you're not pushing your pedal. <laughs> okay, and then continue stitching to the square. So now the next step is to baste your pocket closed. So, okay, so when you come down here, this is piece number one right here, and this is our pocket and our pocket bag. Our pocket is our hands go in right here. So over here, we have the side seams. So we have the side seam of piece number one, and we have the side seams of our pockets. So we're just gonna make sure that that lays nice and flat, like so, and then baste these two things together. The pocket is not going to extend all the way to the hemline. All right, so we've got that locked and loaded, and then they want us to edge stitch along this fold of the pocket, and that's to reinforce this pocket so you're able to put, you know, lots of stuff in there, and then it's not going to rip apart. So we're just going to sew 
I'm gonna again line my presser foot up with the fold of that fabric and I'm gonna ping my needle all the way over as far as it will go. And they only want us to come in, what did they say, an inch and five eighths. You can absolutely measure that at your machine. Um, an inch and five eighths comes to about here. It does not need to be precise by any means. Um, just make sure your pocket and everything is nice and flat. All right, and then this is what you end up with, something along these lines. Isn't that pretty? All right, and our last step here is to actually work on the hem, which is so surprising, but they want us to turn up a one inch hem on lower edge of front, baste close to the bottom fold, turn under a quarter inch on the raw edge, and then baste hem in place close to upper edge and press. What a mess. We are going to do that differently. Okay, folks. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for all that. What the heck? Okay, so here's our hem. Um, so what I'm going to do is take my ruler and my marking tool. I actually have a better one. I like this one better for marking hems. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along the bottom part of our hem here and I'm going to mark it half an inch all the way across. Okay, we've got all those marks. Now I'm going to put another mark two inches from the raw edge. So one and a half above the one we just made. Again, I promise there's a method to the madness. Okay, cool. And now whenever I go over to my ironing board, what I'm gonna do is turn this up like so, meeting the raw edge to that um, first marking, and then turn this whole thing up to the second marking. And then I should be able to press all along there. You know what else I think would actually be super helpful for this is like wonder, wonder tape, wash away, fusible tape. That might actually be a brilliant idea. I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of this and place it just below that second marking. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even really have to be straight. Um, like so, and then I'm gonna peel this back and then do all my folding like this and then inch by inch go along with my iron to make sure that's nice and fused. Okay, I'm severely losing light here, like no joke. Um, I can just see if I can get us through this last step. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, so you can see that worked like a charm. I've got my um, hem like iron basted in place. So I'm going to baste across here like they suggest. Okay. And then that's it. So basically we're just stitching this down, but go ahead and do all of this a second time on the other side of your fabric. So you should have um, a mirrored image of this whenever you are done and before you come back um, for tomorrow's lesson. All right, but she looks really good. I'm so excited. I love this little pocket detail so, so, so much. All right, you guys, if you made it to the end of this video, how about a round of applause for everyone? Absolutely everyone. Good on you. I knew you could do it. Um, so you should have a uh, one side of your jacket now, and then you'll need to repeat all the steps in this video on the other side so that when you come back for tomorrow's video, um, we will be able to install the zipper, which will be attaching the left and right side of your jacket together. If you have absolutely any questions at all about today's video, please leave them in the comments section below. If you would like to send a photo or a video to accompany your question, do that over on Instagram. You can DM me there. I am at inside the hem. But that's it for today, guys. I believe in you and you should too. I'll see you back here tomorrow. We will install the zipper. Bye.